Hi, and welcome to today's episode, which is all about why authors need a mailing list. So even if you're right at the beginning of your writing journey and you haven't even got a first draft yet, or maybe you're just about to launch your debut novel, either way, you still need to have a mailing list. Even further down the line, perhaps you've got two or three books out, then it's even more imperative that you have a mailing list. So listen on to today and find out why. Welcome to the Turning Readers into Writers podcast, where we teach beginner writers how to find the time and the confidence to write their first novel. I'm your host, Emma Desi, and I'm very excited that you're here. Thank you for joining me today, because if you've been longing to write your novel for forever, then this is the place to be. Think of this as your weekly dose of encouragement, of handholding and general cheerleading as you figure out how you're going to write your first novel. Trust me, as a mum of three young kids, I know how tricky it can be to tuck some time aside for yourself on a regular basis. And even when you do find that spare five minutes, you can feel so overwhelmed that no writing gets done. Trust me, I have been there But this podcast is going to help you in practical ways because once a week I'll be delivering an episode that gives you steps to building a writing routine, encouragement to build your confidence and cheerleading until you reach the end. Okay, let's start. Hi everyone, today we are asking the question, do you need a mailing list? And the simple answer is, Yes, you do. (laughs) Every author needs to have a mailing list. That's just a fact. Even if you're still writing your first draft, you need a mailing list. If you're a debut author who has just um, published their first novel, um, you need a a mailing list. It's perhaps only your mum who's going to be on the mailing list or maybe your spouse or your sibling. But that's okay because that's a start. But you still do need to have one. So Why do you need to have a mailing list? Well, the first reason for having a mailing list is so that you can build a relationship with your readers. That's the primary reason. You might be thinking, but I don't have any readers. And my answer to you is, okay, not yet. You don't, but one day you will. And it's through your mailing list that you'll keep your readers up to date with how your current work in progress is coming along, um, anything you need to tell them about your publication date, anything exciting that's happening about your book, anything that's happening about your your new work in progress, your second book. So you can inform them on on anything that you're doing, even kind of the the editing process. And then later, you know, if you're an indie author like me, you can tease your readers with um, cover reveals, snippets from your novel, any sort of behind the scenes glimpses into your, open quotes, exciting world of being an author. And when you've got a mailing list, It means you can use email and email is a very personal way of getting in touch. So writing to your email list, you want to do it as if you're writing to your best friend. You know, you want to use a conversational tone, something that makes them feel part of the family and and not just a faceless reader out there in the Ethernet. Because it's this personal touch that encourages readers to reply to your email with uh, messages of encouragement of their own about the work that you're doing or anecdotes from their own life that they feel is sort of relevant to what you're talking about. So, for example, if you're researching World War Two. Tell your readers about that because someone might just respond with a story about their grandparent and that will fit beautifully into your novel and it's something that you can use to add a little bit of depth and a bit of layering into your book. But ultimately, having a mailing list is a really direct way of letting your readers know that your book is available for sale and then you can encourage them to purchase it from their preferred retailer, but then you can also encourage them to share it with their friends and crucially leave a review after reading it. 
Some people do get worried about your privacy and you might be thinking about that. It, it is something that people do get concerned about and they do want to sort of keep a little bit of distance between themselves and their reader so that they maintain that privacy and a, um, a level of anonymity. And that's absolutely fine. I mean, there's no need for you to share pictures of your kids or or your family holidays or where you live or, or anything else that, that you deem too close to home, too close to the bone. But what you can share are photographs of your working desk, um, notes that you've taken uh, in the course of your research, any interesting facts that you've discovered while researching. You can share inspiring quotes from other authors, share books that you've enjoyed, whether they be craft books or um, other novels that you've written, preferably within the genre that you write. But you can also share times, you know, when you're feeling frustrated with your writing and a little bit lost because readers do enjoy those aspects as well. It's a glimpse into the writing world and it's all the more fascinating if they themselves, your reader, is not a creative or doesn't consider themselves to be a creative because to the outside world, the life of a writer can seem very, very glamorous, even though we know it's not. We know it's, you know, being stuck at a desk. (laughs) Um, But where do you start? Well, When it comes to building your mailing list, I recommend that you use an email platform, an online platform. Um, It's basically a website that you subscribe to and they hold all the email addresses that are on your list. Um, Two I would recommend looking at initially are MailChimp and another one called Active Campaign. There are many others out there, but these are two that I know and I know that they offer free subscriptions to to anybody who's just beginning. So if you have fewer than, say, 500 subscribers to your mailing list, um, I think it's that number anyway, then your, your membership is free. The next thing you need to think about is having something to offer your future reader in exchange for their email address. The gone are the days where you can just say, you know, give me your email address and I'll pop you on my newsletter that's um, a thing of the past. You need, you know, our email addresses are very precious to us because we get bombarded with emails every week. And so who we give our email address to, we're a lot more protective about these days than we used to. So you do need to have something to offer your reader in exchange for that. And most writers use a short story to do this. But you can also use um, a prologue to your novel or even create some kind of fun gimmick around your book. So, for example, if you're writing fantasy, you perhaps have had some drawings made up of the characters in your book or perhaps even a map of where your where your story takes place. If you're writing a romance, perhaps you can create a a love letter that somebody wrote before the romance novel begins. Um, If you're writing a thriller or a a murder mystery, perhaps there's a news clipping that um, your character read about or was published in the imaginary world that was all about the, the crime story you're writing about. So and you can design that to look like a front page of a, of a local paper, for example. Myself, I use a prologue as my reader magnet, which is is what it's known as, and the freebie that you give away. And I give that to anybody who um, gives me their email address and signs up to be on my uh, mailing list for my readership. So not only is this a free way of growing my mailing list, but it also gives the, the reader a taste for my writing style and the type of story that I tell. And then hopefully they'll enjoy the short story, they'll enjoy the prologue, and they'll be interested enough to go on and read the novel. So you can do that with uh, with your books too. So you've found somewhere to host your mailing list, either on MailChimp or ConvertKit or um, Active Campaign or one of the others that are out there. You have given somebody a reader magnet, um, a freebie that you're exchanging for the email address. But then, you know, what do you do with it? <laughs> what do you send to the people who have signed up for your newsletter? Well, I recommend that you send your newsletter out at least once a month. Um, Once a month is often enough to remind the reader that you're still there, you know, you're still scribbling away, uh, but it's infrequent enough so as not to intrude upon their mailbox. 
because we all know how it feels to have just emails bombarding us too many in a day is just too much and we kind of often end up unsubscribing to them because we're just bombarded so we don't want to do that we just want to let them know that we're there but without um, overwhelming them that said the closer you get to publication date the the you can start to increase the frequency with which you contact your list teasing them about the upcoming release with for example the 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 cover reveal um the blurb that you've got for your book or um you know letting them know the publication date that sort of thing you want to let them know it's coming and you want to let them often enough so that they don't forget but the one thing you must remember and this is kind of a, a a no-no really is you do not email them only when you've got something to sell that is um it's not a very nice relationship to have um if somebody didn't get in touch with you until they had something to sell you then you'd be a bit miffed and you'd think well mm, I don't know you very well I don't think I want to buy something from you but if you've developed a relationship with your reading list over six to 12 months or however long they've been on your list, you're building a relationship. And it's that relationship with your reader that will turn them from someone who is interested in your freebie to actually wanting to know more about the book and then going out to buy it, hopefully enjoying what they've read and then becoming a raving fan, you know, someone who will buy everything that you put out there um, because they love your work so much. So that is one of the a key advantage to having a mailing list is that you can take your time and build this lovely relationship with them. But a mailing list isn't the only way and you can use sort of other social media to do this. And I do recommend that you, you choose one social media platform as a way of connecting with your audience. I predominantly use Facebook and so nearly all of my social media is done there. But you might prefer to use Instagram or Twitter and so use whichever platform it is that you enjoy using, use that one to introduce people to your writing and to you as a person. It's another way of sort of building a relationship with them. I recommend that you don't do too much, however, you know, don't try and do all the platforms out there. Choose the one that you like the most uh, and stick with that one for the time being, because you don't want to be spending time on a platform that you, you really don't enjoy. And what about a website? Do you need a website? Well, I'm afraid the answer to this one is also a yes. Yes, you do need a website. Um, but it doesn't need to be all whistles and bells. You can have a simple one page website that contains all the information that your readers need for the time being. So all you need to put up at the beginning, for example, is a photograph of yourself, a small bio about you and your writing and your work, and then the name of your upcoming book and how they can get in touch with you. And you can even set up a, a Gmail account, for example, that is separate from your personal account. So anything that comes into your author account can be kept very, very separate from anything that's to do with your personal and private life. Um, and when your book is published, well, you can use that website as a way of either redirecting people to an online seller or further down the line, you can even use that website to sell your books. But that's not something you need to worry about yet. But just know that that is something you can do in the future. And according to sources more knowledgeable than me, that is the way things are heading. People are going to be moving away from the big conglomerates and using their own websites as a place to, to sell their own products. So where can you build a website? Well, this will depend on the your level of technical skills and whether or not you want to do it. Um, so if you do want to build your own website, something you're interested in doing, you can use a platform such as WordPress. Um, that's one of the most commonly used ones and is you can connect WordPress to almost any other kind of um, blogging service or... Um, a mailing list service out there. It's, it's very, very, very common. But if you do not want to have any involvement in the technical side, you could always ask a friend to do it for you. And a millennial is kind of generally a good bet to ask. They, they seem to be very good with technology. It feels like it comes really easily to them. But you can do it yourself too. Um, there are 
a sort of very simple websites such as godaddy.com or wix.com. They provide you with templates that you can use and just update with your own information. So you just log in, create an account, um, decide on a template that you like, and then just add in your information and hit publish. And then you don't need to do anything else with it. You just leave the page alone and you don't touch it until you're ready to update it with more information about your published novel. Um, so that could, that's a really nice, simple option and just to create one page, just to let people know a little bit about you. So if you've done that, if you've built a website, either way, you know, either doing it through WordPress or getting someone else to do it for you or going to something like GoDaddy or Wix, well, how do you tell people about it? In the early days, you know, before you start investing in any kind of advertising or before you found an agent who's going to do some of that for you, you can just simply put it on your social media bio. That's um, a really easy way of doing it. So on your Facebook page or your Instagram page, just pop it up there so people can see it. And if they're interested, they can click through and um, find out more about you. Another thing you can do is put it at the bottom of your email signature. Again, it just sits there. You don't need to do anything with it. Um, people, people who are interested, they'll click through. And so that way it's nice and easy for you and you can just let um, your mailing list grow organically. So I want you to kind of see from this that having an online presence and having a website that you can direct people to, it's, it's really simple. It does not have to be difficult and it does not have to involve a lot of work, but it's a really simple, easy way of starting. Um, and from that, you can build as your writing career grows, as your confidence grows and as you feel that you've got more to share with people. So if you're still not sure why this is important, I want to reiterate, it's all about relationships. Your mailing list, your online presence, all of it, it's all about relationships. That is the number one reason that you must, in this modern day, have an online presence and a mailing list if you want to sell books. It doesn't matter, it really doesn't matter if you're going for a traditional deal or you're going to be an indie author, in both situations, you need to carve out and nourish an audience that's yours. Um, even if you go with a traditional uh, publisher, their marketing and advertising budget for you is likely to be non-existent. So you still need to do a lot of the advertising and promotion yourself. You might get lucky and you might be the new breakout movie, uh, the new breakout book of the season. That's always possible. But don't bank on it. <laughs> um, you know, kind of um, put yourself in the best position that you can and, and start building that online presence for yourself. Um, so, for example, if you are a if you're writing nonfiction, a, a how to book, a mailing list can demonstrate to an agent or a publisher that you have a following who is interested in this subject. And that can be a really big help towards getting your book deal. Equally, if you're a fiction writer, if you're able to demonstrate that you've got readers who are keen to read what you're producing, that really, really is a bonus. It's not going to guarantee represent representation in the way that it might help with a non-fiction book, but it's not going to do you any harm either. You know, at least you've got something demonstrable that you can say, look, people are enjoying my short story. People are interested in what I'm writing about. Um, there's definitely an audience for this type of work. So I encourage you to schedule in some time to researching um, uh, email service providers and also to research website hosting. So how might you just create a one a one page website for yourself? Give yourself an hour to do the research on the um email the email service provider give yourself another hour to search the websites and then maybe another 40 minutes or so just to create your one page remember though it does not need to be complicated you just need a little bit of information about you your bio you need a photograph and you need some way for readers to contact you if they're interested in learning more all right. So a nice short episode today because, you know, having a mailing list isn't as complicated as it first appears. If you'd like to know more about the nitty gritty about how to set this up, please do let me know. I can do further um, 
blogs and podcasts about this. I can help you out with that or I can steer you in the direction of others. Whatever is most, uh, whatever you need most, I can do that. Um, you can contact me at emma at emmadesi.com and I will happily be of service. All right, take care for now and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me. You know, I just wanted to let you know about a very special event I am holding throughout the month of August. It is a special 20 day event called Author Accelerator. And it's especially for you if you are a beginner writer, because I am inviting in to talk to me a whole heap of experts, whether it be a how to write type book or whether it be how to get in the right frame of mind or whether it be how to build your confidence and reduce that imposter syndrome. I've got experts coming in to chat to you about all sorts of things. So head on over to my Facebook group, Turning Readers into Writers, and join in the fun which will be happening throughout August for our August Author Accelerator. Great. I can't wait to see you there. Bye bye.